Hi, my name is Rian, and today I'm going to talk to you about the extraction of overlapping modules in networks using spectral methods and information theory. This is a collaboration with Paul Navarro Kost and Luis Rocha. So let me start with a very practical example. This is the Drosophila intestinal lining gene interaction network. Every node in this network is a gene, and every connection between two nodes is a known interaction between two genes. This is a weighted network. Um, our goal then is to identify biologically relevant modules in these networks uh, with the few things that we need to take into account. One is that genes are known to participate in different cell functions, meaning that nodes in this network must be able to be present in different modules. Modules can be organized hierarchically and modules should, should be able to recapitulate biological process. Uh, our method then goes as follows. We start from this weighted graph. Uh, we can also work with bipartite graph, but today we're not going to talk about them. Uh, using the adjacency matrix of these networks, we pass them through a spectral decomposition, uh, meaning that we can apply singular value decomposition, which is especially the case for bipartite graphs, uh, but we can also use principal component analysis, which is the spectral, spectral decomposition on the covariance matrix of the adjacency matrix. This will give us the explained variance for each component uh, in this shown in this plot here, that the first component explains about 20% of the overall variance of the network structure. Uh, it's very common then to plot the projection of these nodes or these variables onto these biplots where you have component one and component two, or where you can also have component two and component three and so forth. Uh, the, the position of these uh, nodes in these plots is represent the strength of association of a node with a particular singular vector or with a particular component. And what we're interested in then is that not to take into account points that are, are at the origin because those are not associated with either component, but we're actually interested in these protrusions of the nodes uh, that lie outside of the origin of the, of the plot. So we need a systematized way to identify where's the origin, what's not the origin, which is not really clear from these two plots. And in order to do that, we transform these plots into their polar projections. So that means we calculated the distance from every point to the origin and the angle from every point to the line. And this is what you show in these polar projection plots, the same for component one and two and for the component two and three as well. Using these plots, we can then uh, use a moving window where we calculate the entropy uh, of the distribution of points within this window which means that high entropy values mean that the points are just uniformly distributed around, uh, inside of the, uh, of the side of the window. So that would be those uh, close to the origin as shown here in this, in this position. Uh, and lower entropy points would mean that there is some structure in the overall distribution of the points. If we plot the values of this entropy on top of this graph, we can see that wherever there is a deep uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the red line, we can see that the, the overall structure um, on the plot re resembles that, the, that there's not a uniform distribution of those plots. Uh, we then, uh, to define where is the best location, to define what's the origin, what's not the origin, uh, this becomes then a multi-objective optimization uh, to find this best radius at which we define the, to be the origin. This uh, three lines show the best three guesses uh, using the rank sum of both the radius and the entropy, meaning that we're interested in low entropy values, but also low radius values, right? So this will be maximizing the amount of points that we're actually considering. Using this blue line uh, as the, the definition of the origin, we can then define where are the actual modules. This is the orange module then, and this is the pink module uh, that's being defined. And we can then answer the question, are these modules biologically relevant? And we find that the orange module has to do with cell translation, and the pink module has to do with cell ubiquitination, two uh, very prominent uh, and well-defined processes in, in, in in, in, in these cells. Uh, we can look where these modules are located in the network, but most importantly, we can see that some, there are some nodes that are actually overlapping between those modules, about 3% of them. And if you do this for all of the modules that we found, uh, we see that this range, these value ranges for 2% all the way to 42%. The, this 18% is an interesting case because, because it actually represents a sub-module for the mitochondrial translation uh, of the overall translation module shown here in red. So with that, I thank you for your time. Uh, we have an upcoming paper that we apply this method to synthetic networks, uh, to knowledge networks, and also to social networks. 
Uh, I look forward to your questions. Thank you.